Hi, timber lobe epilepsy is one of the most common and interesting parts of epilepsy because of the complexity of the timber lobe. So today we'll talk about how we can make the diagnosis and treatment of temporal lobe epilepsy. The temporal lobe has many different functions, including uh, memory formation and storage, language uh, function and speaking and understanding the speech, emotional processing, and even uh, hearing and other functions. The cause of temporal lobe epilepsy can be variable and mostly caused by prolonged febrile seizures. When seizures last for more than 30 minutes as a child, that can lead to a consequences of hardening and scarring of the temporal lobe, leading to seizures in the future. It can be due to a trauma hit to the head that can cause scarring in the temporal lobe, it can be due to a stroke, or even due to infection like meningitis or encephalitis, and even inflammation in the brain, such as autoimmune encephalitis. All of those can cause issues in the temporal lobe, and sometimes even we have problems with the formation of the cells in the womb and that can cause uh, seizures such as cortical dysplasia with abnormal formation of the cells early on in life. How does temporal lobe epilepsy present? There are multiple types of seizures that can present in temporal lobe epilepsy which are focal with impaired or not impaired awareness. So first of all, usually it starts with aura. Aura which is an abnormal sensation or the warning before the seizure happens. It can be the sensation of fear. It can be anxiety or feeling of uprising sensation. Somebody said like it's like a roller coaster feeling or the butterflies coming off the stomach, coming up uh, in your chest. All of those can be the aura at the beginning of the seizure. And it can be some experiential uh, symptoms such as feeling things be familiar before, such as deja vu or fe feeling everything not familiar at all and which is called jamais vu like, excuse my French is not excellent. Uh, also, it can be uh, fear or crying and emotional experiences. Some people will feel uh, sudden laughter or sudden crying. All of those can be the beginning of the seizure in the temporal lobe. And because it also affects the uh, speech area, it can be starting nonsensical speech without making sense or speaking gibberish. And it controls the autonomic function. And some people will have goosebumps as part of the beginning of the seizure. Other interesting symptoms will be stirring and then what we call automatism which is repetitive movements and it can happen in the mouth like this people will have some repetitive chewing movements in their mouth or automatism in the body with the, mostly in the hands will be fumbling and moving in the hand and interestingly the hand that you move uh, mostly with at the beginning is where the seizure happens in that right side or left side so it will be the same seizure side where the hand is uh, moving and, and going around and the seizures usually start in the temporal lobe and then rapidly move around to the other temporal lobe or to the whole brain and then then it will be going into generalized shaking all over which is called focal to bilateral uh, tonic-clonic seizures or previously was called complex partial seizures or grand mal seizures. And it is important to note that the temporal lobe has lots to do with the heart control and frequently the heart will be racing fast which is tachycardia during the seizure even early on and we use this in the treatment and sometimes unfortunately the heart can be much slower called bradycardia and even cause asystole and complete stopping in the heart which can be a very dangerous complication during the seizure which we have seen in our practice multiple times people have complete stopping in their heart during the seizure and we had to even implant a pacemaker to keep the heart beating when it completely stops. All right, how we can make the diagnosis of temporal lobe epilepsy? Well, the, the first step in diagnosis is taking a detailed history of all the symptoms that the patient will have during the event. So mostly uh, what happens during the seizure, how does it start and how does it go? And it would be excellent if you can take a video of yourself or of your loved one so that you can present to your doctor. The second step will be taking pictures of the head, including a brain MRI, and brain MRIs are not all equal. There are some specific MRIs for epilepsy, we call epilepsy protocol MRIs, that will take thin cuts through the temporal lobe, which is the area that all the seizures are happening from, and that will give us much better chances of capturing anything that is subtle and small, and best scenario is if the MRI is being read by an experienced neuroradiologist in epilepsy. 
And the last test is doing an EEG, which is a brainwave test that we're putting the wires on the head to record the brain electrical activity. And we can often see the abnormal buzz of electricity that can happen in the temporal lobe. And we can see it and differentiate if it's right or left and how frequent these discharges are. And it is important to note that temporal lobe epilepsy because it can affect the emotion and the memory. It is often associated with memory loss and in some patients with psychiatric disorders such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, and even psychosis in some patients. And interestingly as well, some patients have reported decreased sexual drive in the temporal lobe epilepsy. All right, how can we effectively treat temporal lobe epilepsy and seizures? Well, the first step and most successful one is treatment with anti-seizure drugs and medications. Luckily, about 50 to 70% of the patients will respond very well to anti-seizure medications. How can we choose the anti-seizure medications is a skill, and not every medication works for every patient, so always we have to consider the background of the patient before deciding on the medication. For example, the most commonly used medication for seizures is called levetiracetam or Kepra. And Kepra is an excellent medication, however, it does cause psychiatric side effects and if you have history of depression, anxiety, PTSD or psychosis or bipolar or have a family history of uh, anxiety and depression, we should avoid Kepra because it can worsen those symptoms and we can use on the other side some other medication that can fight depression and anxiety such as Lamotrigine and Valproic Acid. Also if the medications do not control the seizures which can happen in about a quarter of the patients and this uh, diagnosis is called drug resistant epilepsy we can do some surgical treatments. And surgical treatments includes, if we find the scar, such as like mesial temporal sclerosis or hippocampal sclerosis, or there is like any specific scar we can see, we can take that out during surgery and then hopefully stop the seizures, which can be very successful treatment. And if the area of the brain cannot be resected, cannot be taken out, then we have other options with devices implanted in the brain, such as the responsive neurostimulation or RNS in Europace, and this device can tell us how many seizures are happening, and if there are two temporal lobe seizures, like right and left, we can put wires in both temporal lobes, and that will track over time which temporal lobe is responsible for the majority of seizures and maybe even take it out in the future. Also, we can do other devices such as the deep brain stimulation and vagus nerve stimulation, which I detailed in another video about drug-resistant epilepsy that you can review. And recently, there is a new uh, technology that we can use to treat temporal lobe epilepsy, especially the mesial temporal sclerosis, which is using laser, and it's called laser ablation, laser interstitial thermal uh, coagulation therapy, so which is the treatment with laser to not take the whole brain area and just laser it. And we are currently studying this in clinical trials, and I am part of the clinical trial studying that. So once this research is for prime time, we'll share it with the world, then hopefully it will be the standard of care for epilepsy in the future. And it is important to understand the second most common uh, epilepsy type, which is the frontal lobe epilepsy, which can often be missed diagnosed as temporal lobe epilepsy and to learn more about frontal lobe epilepsy you can see this video and stay healthy and see you in the next one. Salam.